right, we are rolling both video and audio here. Let me I'm gonna do a little adjusting with the microphone here real quick. Go ahead and give me a sound test. Hey yo. Can turn you up a little. You always come you, you always come through real mumbled. All right. <clears throat> All right. Hi everybody. Um uh. I know he hates cameras, but and we're not going to do this for the whole night. Just just for a little bit, I want to test out. I figured out a way to run our sound system through the computer into the camera, so I don't have to do any syncing. And since we have our live show coming up in December, where we're going to review Rogue One, I wanted to be able to make sure everybody could hear us. So hopefully, they'll have it on PC by then. Although I'll have to work something out with my phone. But right now, they only have Facebook Live on the phone. So well, I mean, who knows if we could actually put this on because of the new YouTube rules and stuff about cursing and violence and sexual activity uh well you know and, well earl likes to be naked during our show <laughs> we've never actually <laughs> caught him on film naked though but the swearing part i you know yeah i watched that if you go to go to a good description again we're referencing comic book girl 19 she's kind of our our, our youtube guru and um she was complaining about it because she does most of her stuff on youtube if not all of it and uh it, apparently youtube is Changing the rules. Basically, right. they're they're pussying out is what they're doing. Well, they're they're uh, bowing down to mainstream media and their sponsors. But our show sucks so bad. We don't have sponsors or things to worry about. That. <laughs> so no. thank goodness for no sponsors. And you know what? If YouTube cuts us off, we'll just I'll just, like I said I'll just put videos on Facebook and we'll still use a pod audio podcast medium somehow. And if you decide to sponsor, I will <clears throat> decide to go ahead and cut out all the cursing. So. Why? You want to pay me for this? I'll follow by some rules. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Well, you we, know, we can work something out there. <laughs> we can be clever. <laughs> we, if we didn't have to swear, we could be clever. I mean... Oh, gosh darn it. You burned the muffins. Come on, Crown Royal. Yeah. Pay me. <laughs> Crown Royal. You know, I really like that crack and rum. Mm, <laughs> oh, way. yeah. Oh. I, didn't, I don't have it today. We but. would be like the ghost... Like spokesman for the year, you ghost. Know, be, uh, that's right. Yeah, that would, uh, ghost whiskey. Yes. Oh, Jacob's ghost. That stuff. <laughs> it is supposed to be crap whiskey too, but we love it. Yeah, I know. It's like candy. <laughs> uh, it is. So uh, keep in mind all those, and uh, go ahead and hopefully some big wig from any of those are sponsoring us. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Here's the thing, though. When it comes to the live one, I am gonna like pour some money into boosting the ad. Yeah, um, well, I've based, done that. I've done that before. Yeah, when we first started, and we've and some of our audio stuff. And granted, even back then, our audio quality was really shitty back right. then, and it's it marginally better now. I've kind of figured a few things out, and you know, kind of figured out how to do it. But um, let's, uh, for that matter, let's go ahead and get rid of this video here, so it's just that up there. But anyway, we're this. We weren't planning on recording tonight. Um, uh, I wasn't even planning on anything until the the. the uh, Star Wars November. until yeah. the Star Wars one um, because of the holidays coming up and of course we have our Halloween party coming up this year hopefully we won't get you know rained out this year like we did last year and I'll probably walk around live during the party for a while you know on the phone um, actually we were already rained in haha <laughs> rained in well yeah we were rained, rained in, in. that's right yeah. we were, we rained, were in. rained in yeah <laughs> the, the room next to me was flooded to about two three feet and uh, <clears throat> and we were rained in that's right we uh yeah yeah uh, I, I, of course, actually, it probably worked out well because not that it matters. We never get any trick or treaters at our house. You right. know, I decorate like crazy. We uh, we live in a neighborhood. I guess all the people that live here are either single douchebags or old people. We've got like one couple with kids next to us, and they're the only ones who usually ever come over and trick or treat. We've got lights and headstones, and I got projections in the fucking window. Last year, I was walking around as, as a dark Jedi with a you know lightsaber and nothing. Like I could hardly get anybody to do anything. So yeah, I think. Three groups came to the door. Yeah, so we just sat around and drank. We did. That sounds like <laughs> um, us, though. Yeah, it does. It sounds like us. So anyway, now, so that being said, I hadn't planned on anything tonight. I didn't have anything planned for us to talk about tonight, but Jay sent me a message today saying uh, we should, or yesterday, we should record this weekend. And I huh? said, well, let me know. Yeah. And uh, apparently he's got some stuff going on. So well, I don't really have anything going on. It's just like, well, he's uh, got some stuff he wants to talk about. You brought it up, like, hey, I want to do something for... The Wonder Twins, and but they're not here tonight. Not here, yeah, yeah. Um, um, although we will, we, we will talk about this. We saw this at the uh, Comic Con we just went to, Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I told the story of how I wish I'd have followed through with my idea for this, but I'm not an artist, so I went and I was at uh, the comic book shop the other day, and I bought that and gave it to Jay the other day to read, and 
I'm actually pretty impressed with it. But is that uh, you said you had some things stirring in your head? So what did you want to start well, with today? Well, I mean, let's just, let's start, we already let's start started. With with, like, right. let's start with Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Teenage Turtles. Turtles. Um, I, I told the story about how you know I, I kind of came up with this idea, this notion of uh, Batman and the Turtles, and it can actually there's a couple scenes in this that were very similar to what I thought up, except they used Damian Wayne instead of Jason Todd, which actually makes sense because Damian's a dick. Right. So I really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, I thought Mikey was funny as hell. Mikey was good. Mikey was really good. I thought, um, I was a little concerned because I really don't care. It, they almost look like the new Turtles from the new movies, the Michael Bay movies, and I just have no interest. I've seen the first one, and it was horrible. And uh, I'm really, you know, protective of the original Turtle uh, comic book, and of course Batman being my favorite character ever. But I think I feel like we're at the library, and he's going to start reading it, and then showing all the <laughs> pictures, the pictures too. And see, like, see, just Batman like, whooping just some like ass. the librarian did back in elementary school. I don't know if they do that anymore, but they probably have a video. Yeah, no, probably, probably don't do that Stupid anymore. Videos, videos. <laughs> anyway, so mm. Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Basically, without getting any spoilers, the gist is it's a it's a cross dimensional story. Some else world else world story pretend that they're all in the same universe. This one doesn't. This one's flat out. They're from New York of a different universe. And, of course, Batman's in Gotham of a yet another different universe, and they right. ha end up crossing over by accident. They don't really explain how too much, but they just kind of cross over by accident. And it turns out that while they're in Batman's universe, the mutagen that makes them what they are is degrading. Right. And I will point one thing out that bugged me, and I'll see if you noticed this. Did you know anything about Splinter that bugged you? They were talking about all of them dying because their mutagen's going away, which essentially, even Splinter points this out, you're not going to die, you're just going to revert back to a turtle. Right. But... When Splinter now, there's two versions of Splinter in the in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle canon. This version walks into a room and Shredder Orukusaki turns to him and calls him Yamato Yoshi, right. which means he's the Shredder from the cartoon and maybe the original comic. I don't remember where he's a human merged with a rat. Which no. Means, yeah, Yamato Yoshi is the 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 sensei. Oh. And in the cartoon and in at least some of the comic books from back in the eighties, I don't know about the original Eastman and Laird ones, but. In the 80s, that was a result of him merging with a rat, with the mutagen. Whereas when the new movie came out, new movie, when the movie came out in 89, right. the one we love. He uh, was a rat in a cage. He was a rat in a cage. He, he was Hamato was... Yoshi's pet. Right. Okay. And he got changed by the mutagen because he got separated okay. from Hamato. Right. And... That, that's what I was thinking. Was <laughs> yeah. Like... That's the one I prefer. Because to me, that makes more sense. To me, it makes it cooler. The fact that he's half human, half rat is kind of annoying. But Well, yeah, because that makes more sense with the turtle exactly. theory. Like the turtles just were turtles. They didn't mutate with anybody else right so why yeah. would they be humanistic or why would they be close yeah. to human of course this makes me want to watch the 89 turtles i love it when they're raising the turtles and little puppets are walking around mm. pizza you know, that's right. great shit um people dog that movie i don't, I don't understand it but uh, it's a great movie it's, wonderful i mean movie. it's 1988 what are you gonna do yeah it's it's amazing uh, it really is fun to watch it's still better than I like that one. I like the third one where they travel back to ancient Japan. A lot of people give that one shit. Yeah, that one was actually kind of. Funny. That one's okay. The second one blows, um, except for it's got Ernie Ray Jr. without the makeup. Like he was, he was in the suit for Donatello in the first movie, and then was on his own outside in the second one, which I love Ernie Ray Jr. So, I don't know if anybody can hear that. What is that? What is what? Oh, that's your dryer. That's my dryer. Okay. Yeah, and I yeah. I can hear it. In fact, I'm going to go ch shut that door, because I can hear it in my microphone, okay. too. I just thought it might be some of the background noise. So stand by there, folks. <laughs> go ahead, Jay. Yeah, say what you think about the book while I'm doing that. So I actually kind of liked it. I mean, uh, Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the one thing is that it was kind of short. Um, I mean, this is the entire, this little graphic novel is the entire thing of the, the entire story. So Batman teaming up with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, so quickly was kind of unseen. You kind of want to see them fight a little bit more or come together, like have a story on, on how they, they came together. It just, they just happened. Like they went to a fight, they realized that they were all on the same side and then they all decided to go fight the Shredder. So I, I think there should have been more turmoil turmoil between Batman and, Teen, and, and the Turtles. Um, but well, they kind of filled that gap when Damien showed up. Yeah, but with the book this short, I could see why they just did it so quickly. Because I think it was like what, four issues originally, or something. Probably three, actually. That's a yeah. Because that I thought that was really short. Because right when I first saw, first read it, like the first page says, "All right, this is number one." Yeah. You didn't realize it's you know it doesn't say okay number two, number three, or whatever. Yeah. They just took the title pages um, out. 
Yeah, so I thought I thought it was really short in that in that sense. They could have done more with Batman fighting the turtles and then, you know, meshing together kind of Well plus the last like what third quarter of the book is all art, which is cool art. Yeah, that's but that's pretty much all it is. Although I do dig the scene where uh when they before they figured out they were friends, Batman is fighting Leonardo directly. Mm-hmm. Just the two of them. And Splinter says something about Watch what you, watch what he's doing. He's forcing you to move a certain way or something right. like that. It, your stance is wrong or your your posture is wrong. And Batman's like, I think he's perfect. <laughs> and Splinter's like, I wasn't talking to him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I thought was awesome. And then all of a sudden, Leo like belts Batman in the, in the face or something. Now I'll um, let I'll let the turtles get one shot in into Batman. But I was impressed with how cool Splinter was. Like he was the baddest of everybody in the in the whole story. Well, yeah, and he always is. I just loved that. I thought that was a really well, cool thing. Well, he's he's like Yoda. He don't, yeah. You don't see him fight very often, but you know he can. Yeah, you know when he he's does. Just, or, hmm, there's something about him. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna piss him off. Well, literally, he's, I don't know why. He's based on Stick from Daredevil. Like he's that doesn't move around very much. When he does, he's yeah. gonna hurt you. <laughs> right. So it's I I dug it. It was fun. It was funny. I think. I, I think the humor level was perfect. Yes, it in, was. In the entire, it wasn't too... Without being campy. Yeah, it wasn't too too much. It wasn't too serious. And there was actual humor in it, mm-hmm. like uh, with Alfred and the pizza, or even oh. or, or, or even uh, Michelangelo. Here, have a slice of pizza, Batman. Relax, just chill. <laughs> chill out. And Batman actually does gra- <laughs> grab a slice of pizza. Like, ah, all right, I'm, I'm down. So Which, thought, that is pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool, is, is the, they didn't make Batman too serious for this whole thing. The one thing that I do have to ask is, who's Robin? That's Damian Wayne. Okay, I've never heard of Damian. You don't know Wayne. about this. I even I've only read a little bit. My favorite Robin is Tim Drake, the one we know, well, the one I know from the '90s. After Jason Todd died, Tim Drake figured out who Batman was, and then he ended up adopting. And I'll get into that it's a whole long story. Right. But when I came into reading Batman, Tim Drake came along. Well, now he's an adult, kind of like the way Nightwing is, and he's the Red Robin. He took over the Red Robin uh, persona, and uh, F- Batman found out that his his girlfriend. Rachel Ghoul's daughter Talia after I somewhere I run head of the demon or one of those storylines right. where they boned um, she ended up pregnant and she was raising the son Damien who they trained like Cassandra Kane or is it Cassandra Kane or is it, who was the bat girl that was mute uh, kind of trained trained him like a perfect assassin he was being trained by the League of Assassins and so he was he was a killer he was just flat out a killer right. and through a series of circumstances Talia ends up leaving him with Bruce Basically, hey, here's your son. Now it's your turn. Tag, you're it. I had the first ten years. Go ahead. Right. And he and for a while there, when Bruce was missing, that year he was missing, round about Flashpoint, right before Flashpoint, all the New Fifty Two and all that shit. Um, he was Robin with Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson was Batman. Right. And then Bruce came back, and he continued to be Robin. And he still carries the sword, which I think is really cool. But now he doesn't kill, or he doesn't you know he tries to keep him from killing. Right. So he's he's this uber assassin little kid. Okay. Um. So I'm glad it was him because the tension, you need the tension. Mm-hmm. And that scene with Damien on the top of the back computer, like, you're in my house. What yeah. the hell are you doing in my house? Yeah. And of course, oh, that was the other thing. That's, that... You know what? That's like a basic nine year old punk attitude. Oh, yeah. Without having to be an assassin, I just know. Yeah. Like, you're in my house. Because Jason Todd would have said that too, which I thought he would have been yeah. a good character for that too. But actually, the, Mike kept bringing up the mechanical dinosaur. <laughs> I know. And he's like, Casey Jones shows up. He's like, he has a mechanical dinosaur. He's like, I know, isn't that cool? <laughs> Which he's riding I it don't like, know. Yeah, yeah that, that part was kind of confusing because when they broke into Batman and obviously saw this, I was like, why are they in the museum? And like, I didn't know like Bat- Batman had a mechanical dinosaur. I've got a good picture somewhere of the of a from back in the '90s of, of drawing a fold out poster that came in one of the books of, of the Batcave. And it's a good layered, like it gives you, because you look at the Arkham Asylum games or mm-hmm. Batman the movies or whatever, the the, the Bat Caves tend to be really sparse. Right. Or they're, uh, the Tim Burton one's a little bit kind of interesting. But the real Bat Cave, real, I say real, the, the comic book Bat Cave is, is a museum mixed with a uh, dojo, mixed with right. a laboratory, mixed right. with, and it's everything. So he's got that giant penny and he's got the giant card from Joker and he's got the, the right. mechanical Tyrannosaurus Rex. And and thirty Batmobiles, you know, well, and shit yeah. like that. So, it, it's yeah, I I, I, just, I was like, it, it it threw me off a little bit, like wondering where they were at, you know, with the with the dinosaur. I'm like, what the Jay's fuck? never even read Nightfall. Like, I don't have a a, a non electronic copy of Nightfall, so I haven't handed it to him yet. And he has a tendency to lose my books, so I only I'm, lost one. It's not a tendency. You lost one of the big five, dude. 
and you know what? I've offered to buy it to you like you nine will. times. And every time I offer to buy it, nah, dude, I'll wait. I'll no, wait. No, no. I'll wait and see if I can no. find it. That happened at the okay. last Comic Con. Okay, at the Comic Con, it happened. Let me see if I can find it here. Mm. But if I can't find it here, motherfucker, you need to be going on Amazon and buying that son of a bitch because I love that book, <laughs> Emerald Twilight, the the the, <laughs> the 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 end of Hal Jordan as Green Lantern, the beginning of Kyle Rainier. Right. So it, that's one. Of, that's right up there for me with Death of Superman and uh, Nightfall, which which is fine. Like. Yeah, which is like the second tier down from Watchmen, not Dark Knight, and, and Killing Joke, um, for me anyway. Uh, which I just read Death of Superman again the other day, but yeah, I just, I was impressed with this. I haven't been I haven't had that much fun reading a comic book probably since that uh, Joker versus Mask one that you had me buy like thirteen <laughs> years ago. You're like, this looks interesting. You handed it to me like right. this looks neat. I'm like, oh yeah, that's I still have that somewhere. That's a lot of fun. Um, it's not often you get an action one that's fun, right? Um, that's is that much fun anyway. And the turtles kind of have that in spades, especially the revival of the turtles about what eight nine years ago True. that that cartoon was my favorite of the cartoons because it was it sounded like this book actually mm -hmm. yeah you can actually i was kind of going back and forth because whenever i read i have voices in my head and i was like with everybody but Raphael, i had mm -hmm. the movie Raphael voice in my head mm -hmm. but everybody else was from the car all the other voices were was, yeah. was from the cartoon i thought that was like well, you mean you mean the '80s cartoon or the '90 or the later one? The, the one. '80s cartoon. Oh, see, it. I can't do that. For me, it's it's the uh, one from like 2007 or eight. Oh, you know, see, in there. yeah, I didn't watch those. Yeah, those were good actually. They were. In fact, Mikey has one of the greatest lines ever in a scene with, in, like, in the first season, where the where they come to the end of the season, they're confronting Shredder, and it zo the camera zooms in. It's a cartoon, but the camera zooms in on Mikey, and he raises his hand and goes, uh, "Can I go home?" <laughs> Which that's what reminded me of this book. Yeah. It's the same kind of stuff. So I think some of the writers that might have been involved, I don't know, the same thing. <clears throat> but anyway, we've beaten that one to death. We like it. Two, two, uh, or we'll give it four shots. We used to do the shot thing. We do really? four shots. Okay. Okay. I don't, we're I, don't not... I don't remember that, but whatever. Well, we did that up at first when we used to do movie reviews, when we did started we? doing that. We were kind of playing around with what we were going to do. Right. We're still playing around. We don't know what we're doing. This is what, what the, we're pushing into year three now. Oh my God. Yeah. We have like a, I don't know, we're, we got to be up in the higher double digit episode number but mm -hmm. again we're cheap and lazy and, and I had <laughs> so there's only like six or seven episodes on Podomatic which I'm thinking about getting rid of because it's kind of pointless um, so I think I'm just going to start posting on, on just Facebook and YouTube here pretty soon because um, I don't even use iTunes anymore You we tied that conversation last yeah. time I, did. It's, I, don't, I don't even know who still does because most people have, most everybody listens to uh, stuff on their phone now so who the hell's using an iPod speaking of which no. Haha, -ha. uh, Yoga Hosers is available on Amazon Instant. And Kevin Smith's uh, second of the Canadian True North trilogy, and it's not—it's not like Tusk. It really isn't. It's a funny movie, like it's right. a Scooby Doo kind of movie. All right. All right. So I mean, I haven't seen it yet, so I was waiting, uh, but I will be buying it. So maybe this weekend. Maybe this. Maybe this weekend. Okay. Not not this one. The one coming up. Mm, perhaps I have to wait and see if I'm going to be here. But no, I actually, I, I'm I'm leaving. I'll be back next weekend, but I'm leaving. Uh, next week I'll be gone all week. Oh, okay. I'm going to Idaho. All right. So for work. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> we have you been there? Well, <laughs> at least at least you can't get married again in Idaho. Oh, shut up. <laughs> that was an entire marriage ago. <laughs> you hey. know, Eve, what? Hey, had to say it. Okay, fine. <laughs> you know what? You best not be talking to me about marriage anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I've been married to this one longer than the other two combined. Right. <laughs> so. <sighs> so anyway, now you said you had some stuff floating around in your head. Well, all right. Let's. Uh, another thing that, that I know that we've both been watching. I don't know how far you are. I'm on. I've done the first eight episodes of Luke Cage. I've only probably done the first three or four. Oh, okay. I've been watching. Um, the Flash premiered the other day, and I've been catching up on a couple of the things. So. All right, then there goes that. There goes that. Well, I, let's hit, let's do our initial impressions then. Uh, to me, I I like it okay. Um, I, sometimes I like it better than Jessica Jones. Sometimes I like it less. I guess I'm not a big Jessica Jones fan. Um, I liked Luke in Jessica Jones. I thought that was interesting having him having his own show. I'm not sure, but again. Are you enjoying it? Just tell me that. Are you? Are you? I am. Um, okay, so I came up with this theory with uh, Luke Cage and, and Daredevil. Okay. Um, so Luke Cage is uh, more in your face, 
Yeah, like he has a problem. He's, he is now, yeah. Uh, excuse me. He has a problem. He's going to come punch you in the face <laughs> and, and, and deal with it. Or like, just stand there and wait for you to punch him. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of that was, that that was was cool. awesome. The wrist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. Sorry about your window. Yeah, that, that hurt. <laughs> yeah. That hurt me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you got, to me, you got two things going on. You got Luke Cage, mm. and, they, and they talk about Fisk. I don't know if they talk about Jessica Jones. I haven't watched that one yet. Mm. Um, but they talk about Fisk and, and crossover with... Because uh, this just, all takes place before he shows up in Jones, right? This is all... I have no idea about uh, Jones. Because I got the impression it was before that. No, this... Well, this would be after Fisk. So, well, f- uh, okay. of Daredevil. Well, at least after that, okay. All so, right. yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how the timelines are working out here, but... I think it's... Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> um, but you got Luke Cage, who's in your face... You know, everybody knows who he is, blah, blah, blah. And then you have Daredevil, who wears a mask, secret identity. Yeah. Now, and Luke he's Cage, blind for that matter. Luke Cage is more simplistic. He's just going to get shit done. Like, he he walks into a building, and he gets shit done. Because, you know, he's bulletproof. Unlike, you know, Daredevil, who's not bulletproof, he can actually get hit by a bullet. Mm-hmm. So maybe he has to be a little bit more careful. <laughs> Daredevil gets his ass kicked. I mean, he kicks some ass, but yeah, takes Yeah, it. that dude. That he dude, takes it hard. A dude needs to take like a little vacation, you <laughs> yeah, know, okay, like some medicine uh, bones, man. <laughs> as far as I know, he doesn't have a healing factor that I'm aware of. No, so. no, yeah. uh, and that 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 kind of bothers me about Daredevil. He like gets up the next day and goes out and gets his ass kicked yeah, again. Like, I'm like, motherfucker, dude, tomorrow morning I won't gotta get up. Yeah, all day. I'm like, dude, I can't do that after drinking after uh, this show all yeah, night. No long, you know, not, you must feel much worse than I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he goes drinking on top of that. <laughs> yeah, no like, shit. Like Batman don't drink. He told Ben Affleck, <laughs> Batman don't drink. <laughs> Uh, so I guess that's the way Daredevil deals with it. But it's but it's again it's the Batman Superman story. It's the same thing again. It is. But I'll I'll, I'll do you one better. Okay. And Marvel is either genius about doing this, which they have been, or they haven't noticed this yet. Mm-hmm. Um, Luke Cage mm-hmm. shows his face. Everybody knows who he is. Mm-hmm. Daredevil wears a mask. Mm-hmm. Sounds like what? A mask. What do you mean? He wears a mask, hides his identity, and all that. It's Batman and Superman. No, that's Civil War. That's the whole premise of Civil War. Uh, Show us who you are, Tony. Yeah. Register all of this other stuff. That is the premise you had. The premise of the entire Civil War series going on with Luke Cage. You know, hero of the people. Everybody knows and loves who well, he Luke is. Luke Cage is kind of like uh, um, Cyborg. He never gave a damn if anybody knew who he was because it didn't matter. He's like, I'm Luke Cage, twenty four seven, bitch. Um, he the only reason he well, hit his identity at first was to get to keep from other people getting hurt. But now that his wife is dead, and now that his mentor is dead, fuck it. Well, let's go with Luke Cage in the TV show. Okay, let's, let's, let's stick with the TV let's, show. Let's not. But you're right. I'm pretty sure that the guys who are doing the Marvel show are communicating with the guys who are doing the Marvel movies. They don't. They're not technically in the same universe. <laughs> right. But they make hints that they might be. Well, they are because in Luke Cage they talk about the incident. Yeah, and a they lot. do in Daredevil too. Yeah, so the incident in New York. Yeah, so they are all in the, the movies and yeah. those shows are are in the same. But they're universe. not blatantly coming out and saying, "Yeah, when the so and so invaded, when the Cree invaded New York or whatever." They just kind of mention it as the incident. Well, the incident, and then they describe like a few of the characters, yeah. but they don't. But then when, in, when he walks by the people, the guy selling bootleg DVDs, he's like, "Do you want some Thor? You want some Iron Man?" Yeah. Like they're movies. Like yeah. they're not. So it's hard. To, they're kind of going both ways with it. They are, but I think right now is. If they haven't thought about it, it's totally like I'm driving down the street. I'm like, um, on the way here, I'm like, think about Luke Cage and Daredevil and what drives me nuts about Daredevil and why I like Luke Cage a little bit better because mm. he's he's just a little bit more, you know, fuck it, I get shit done. I ain't, I ain't pansing around with this whole like what's going on mm. and you know in the back and and what. in that respect, he's actually better than Superman. Cause Superman kind of hems and haws about shit. Yeah, um, but I was like. And, and then and then it, it occurred to me like it's civil war. It's one guy is like trying to get in the weeds and trying to get like revenge and stop the whole syndicate. Where Luke Cage is like, I'm gonna stop this dude. Uh, and that, all right, there. that's done. I'm gonna stop this dude. Yeah. Well, that's done. You know, and you know, I just I can't say much because I don't want to spoil some stuff. And we'll watch some tomorrow. Um, we'll go but but I, I thought that was interesting. Is that you have the civil war. Mm-hmm. Of both of them, and I, I don't know where Jessica Jones would fall in that. You know, well, you've never neither of, neither of us. So just make, again, not a Marvel person, but I do know that what the Defenders are. The Defenders are like a street level Justice League or a street level Avengers. Yeah, they're Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, and some others. Um, I think that that's what they're leading up to, and I think that 
in that respect, the Netflix shows and the CWDC shows are kind of going neck and neck. Like they're mm-hmm. ones, of course, obviously darker and can swear and have sex, and the other ones can't. But they're both heading toward that team in a way better way than than Batman and Superman did, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I'd even say eventually might turn out to be more fun even than Avengers. Yeah, uh, I think both of those are great. It's the dark and light, you know, dichotomy. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I think you're right. They are they're they're definitely coordinating all that, at least yeah. between the Marvels and between the DCs. Mm-hmm. Well, I say that back. Actually, DCs are like fuck it. Uh, the movie DC people and the TV DCs aren't speaking to each other at all. No. And the TV are going way better. Yeah. Um, and before we uh, just so I know in case we bring it up or not, have you seen the premiere of Flash yet? No, you have not. Yeah, because no. Hulu doesn't do it anymore, fuckers. So I had to watch it on my phone and the premiere of Arrow. By the way, I had to watch it on my phone this morning, um, which is fine. I'm still gonna watch it. But well, you didn't see it, but I'll say Arrow, eh? Flash, oh my god. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I think I think Arrow is done. I I truly think think that because I they, think moved they need to replace it. him. Well, they moved. It's not even on CW anymore. I don't think. No, it is. Supergirl. All of them are on CW now. All of them. I think TNT. I, no, took I promise. Over. Well, then maybe the reruns. But no, they didn't because I just watched it on the CW app on my okay. phone. All right. Um, it's I I agree that I think that uh, this is going to be the last season of Arrow. Yeah. And yeah. I think they should replace it. DC has so many other characters dark like that that they could replace it with, and they did such a good job with it. Uh, I think it's time to walk away before it gets ridiculous. Um, well, I think like you had a perfect ending last season. Like, I agree. After last season, the the way that ended is like, all right. You're and done. I think the only reason they brought it back is so they could do the whole coming together thing. I think if they'd be like, hey, we're bringing Supergirl over to CW, we better renew Arrow so we can have everybody in the Justice League here because the movies blow. You know, that's kind yeah. of Greg Berlanti and, and Andrew Kreisberger kind of doing that. And I'm all for it. But once they do that, yeah, it's time for Arrow to bow out. Yeah. I, I'm kind of done. Especially after watching Daredevil and Luke Cage. I'm kind of like, okay, those are fucking... What you're doing is ridiculous. These guys yeah. are actually knocking it out. Now, if you Legends of Tomorrow and Flash and Supergirl, they work in that in the light. They work in the light. I get that, and I, I think they're a lot of fun. Supergirl is eh, okay. Flash, I'm still like I'm still in love with Flash. Well, Flash works because he's the Flash. He's always he's just goofy. He's always just there. He's always just he, there's no. He'll always have other goofy. You can bring in any goofy bad guy in. That's true. He does. I have mean, the like most awesome rogues gallery. Yeah, I mean, so the Flash could crazy. Yeah, yeah, and and he works. He's he's worked with everybody. Where you know the Arrow has, I guess, technically, really, but he's more of a loner kind of guy. And there there is an end story to the Arrow, and I'm sure there's an end story to the Flash. Um, but the Flash, you can just do so much more with because of the powers, because yeah. of there's a superpower. But there. they're not so so powerful like Supergirl's powerful where he's not indestructible so you can kind of it gives you a little bit more drama except for the remember we talked about the whole Christ thing like Superman's just like Jesus he can never fail yeah yeah but with the arrow it's kind of like the arrow only has really one route to go mm-hmm. um, where you know he goes down the same road as Batman he gets older he gets wiser he starts breaking down and, and all of this other stuff or the Flash you know Flash you know he gets older too. Well, first off, he's younger than Ollie already, so he's got more time. Yeah, you know, he's got more time, but he doesn't go down that dark road. He doesn't go down to where you know he's he's always gonna. I don't know, dude. Hang on, let me finish. He's always gonna be the, the hero, and there's always gonna be able. You can always do goofy shit with him. You have to have deep psychological revenge, whatever stories with the arrow, and, and every season has to end with something like that. And that's gonna be kind of like. <clears throat> The downfall with Luke Cage is going to be the same same thing. Yeah, um, it's going to be there's going to be an end story to where you know they just walk away because he's too old, just tired, you know, whatever. Met the girl and became a politician, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think with the Arrow, there is an end story where the Flash, because mm-hmm. of metahumans, yeah, there will always be metahumans. There will yeah. always be a Flash, and there will always be a Flash that can take over the Flash. Yeah, so he can regenerate. Um, I will say though, with, with somebody else, you gotta you gotta watch the premiere. They do they go down a little bit of a dark road. I, I I've only missed them because I forgot about it. Yeah, but, and plus it's not on Hulu anymore, so you have to watch it on your phone. Like we can't watch it any other way. Well, I I actually have cable where I'm staying at now. Okay, right? either way, <laughs> where you're staying at, by the way, you're like fuck this place. You don't have a cable. Mm. Yeah, I hate cable. But anyway, I, they did go down dark road. And I will tell you, and you already know this anyway because we knew, we knew found this out earlier. The f- name of the first episode is Flashpoint. Yeah. So we all know how Flashpoint went, which is a great animated film and a great book series, by the way. Um, 
so I mean obviously not going that in depth but it is called Flashpoint for a reason and I think they did a pretty good job with it I think it is darker he makes a really fucked up decision that and you wonder like where is it going to go from here now and apparently from what I'm hearing is it's, he's going to deal with the repercussions of that for the rest of the, of the season also everybody's crossing over this season so Legends uh, Arrow I caught the Arrow premiere this morning I think I want to say that um, Legends and Supergirl Supergirl might be tomorrow or tonight Tonight, actually, sorry. Um, hi, you want to be on the show? Um, and then I think Legends is next week or something like that. Yeah, Legends of Tomorrow just drives me nuts. Oh my god, I'm so excited to see Legends. Oh my god, the, the trailer that I saw looks like so much fun. Ugh. Like they go around, like I think somebody sleeps with the queen. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on, <laughs> but I think it looks like a lot of fun. I think they're doing kind of a, a I don't know, sliders kind of thing. They're just right. kind of running around doing crazy shit. But I'm I'm anxious to see how it turns out. Um, I'm. What I am concerned about, though, other than Felicity, I'm a little concerned about the lack of hotties on any of these DC shows. They, you're right. They, they're. I mean, I, I love the gal who plays the White Canary. I just like her, hmm. but and she is hot. Don't get me wrong, but it's there's just not no. that caliber of of Wonder Woman. You know, uh, right. Godot level of hotness going on in these shows. Right. You wait to. I mean, I'll tell you this: in the season premiere of Arrow, they do a, a statue, like Superman esque statue of the Black Canary. It looks like shit. It looks like something some little kid made with a fucking silly putty kit. It's just insane. Like, how did they get away with that? Couldn't they do something a little cooler than that? Um, but it does look really bad. But anyway, uh, have you been watching Gotham at all? No, I. Just... To be honest, that one's not really keeping my attention. I, I caught the first couple episodes, but that might be because I was waiting on the Flash to premiere. Um, because I probably will catch a few more here shortly, because there's a few already posted on Hulu. That one is still on Hulu, thank heavens. Uh, but the one I haven't picked up at all is uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, I'm done. Like, I don't even fucking I, care. I, I can... <clears throat> get, we get we the, watched... Yeah, we watched... Like, like the first season, that's Yeah, it. I'm like, hmm, can't yeah. do it. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, Ming-Na Wen's awesome, but everybody else in that show irritates the fuck out of me. Now, what's the one? It's kind of like Legends, but I think it's on NBC now, and it has uh, like Buck Rogers or something like that. Or... I don't know. Oh. oh, the time travel one. Yeah. Um, timeless, something like that. Uh, let's look it up. Um, it's it's got the guy from ER, and he's traveling back in time trying to change history. That's the only part that's going to drive me nuts. Is I hate that guy. I just I really? can't stand him. I can't stand his acting. He's just. Hmm. Like, I, I'm impressed with how he doesn't look any different than he did 10 years ago when the show when ER ended. Yeah, that's true too. But I mean, I've never seen anything. Uh, to me, it looked like that, he was try, trying he was too in. hard. I just remember, um, what was it, eight days? <laughs> eight days, that guy would travel back in time eight days to stop something. It was on it, it was on cable or something years ago. It was a good kind show. Of. It was a good damn show. And it kind of reminds me of that. Or even Quantum Leap for that matter. God, nobody still can come up with a better idea than Quantum Leap. That is one of the coolest premises I have ever seen in a show ever. Well, and that's, I think that's going to be the problem with the the one we were just talking about that's that's coming it's out on NBC. Timeless like, or whatever. Yeah. Um, because they're going to go and try to stop big events or be influenced. Yeah, like the Hindenburg was on a scene or something like that. Where Quantum Leap, like... It was people they, stories. Yeah. Personal, personal stories. Yeah, little, little personal like nuggets in the news. Mm -hmm. or uh, what, what was that? Uh, the one with the paper. The is, paper. That, is that the one... That you're talking about? Quantum or, Leap or No, where the guy got delivered the paper. Oh, I think that's the show same show we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Um We should check out the first one, just kinda of check it out. Yeah, I can I, I want to. And then there was something else. That's just... another one though you have to catch on your phone because they won't yeah. do it anywhere else. Or on could be cable. Um, repeat it. Damn it, I just had a thought about another one that um where they keep going back in time and, and changing things. Like that a was movie more or a uh, show, a TV show. How many time travel shows are they gonna do this, <laughs> this season? I had to be a movie because I was watching it the other day. I was like, mm. "What the hell?" Oh, a trailer or something. Um, I admit, I've been this summer. I have been out of contact. I started a new job this summer. Yeah, and I haven't even like I posted of the four and a half hours we recorded last time. I think I posted like an hour and a half. Wow, uh, two episodes worth roughly, and I, I've still got like two hours to go through. Um, I had to cut out a lot of political stuff, guys. <laughs> uh, there's whole chunks. I had to go, eh, take them out. Um, but yeah, so I still haven't even gone through that yet. But uh, So I haven't been up on much of anything, except for uh, the big ones, you know, Flash right. and whatnot. 
but I will say that I enjoyed in Gotham when uh, Penguin, you haven't seen it yet, of course, but when Penguin encountered Fish Mooney again, like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> She's back, you know. She came right. back last season. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. But he didn't seen her yet. Like, he didn't know she was back. I thought he did. Maybe he did. Maybe it was some other confrontation or something. They were like, you're dead. Um, there's some interesting, kind of halfway interesting stuff happening with her. Uh, a lot of the villains are getting cooler. The kid who plays Batman is even getting cooler. Like, he's still kind of my favorite part of the whole thing. Him and yeah. him and his and Alfred. Um, I am kind of ready, though, for them to jump ahead. Uh, I kind of... Um, That's another one where I think they just... They, they had a kind of an interesting idea and they went the wrong way with it, maybe. I don't know if they they went the wrong way. I, I don't know if you could have gone another way. And I, hadn't, I saw that... I've been watching... Have not been watching a lot of TV for some reason. Um, or I've been watching, like, I spent six hours ago watching Fast and Loud, you know, think about my Mustang, what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Other than it's sitting in my garage. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Should I sell it? Should I fix it and sell it? <laughs> something. Um, something. If I fix it and sell it, I'm just going to, like, ah. Anyway. Um, so I've been watching, like, Fast and Loud a lot lately, which is weird. Um what was that, like, Top Gear? What's that? I don't even know. What that uh, is. It's, they, they take old classic cars and then they restore them oh, okay. or, or build like them fun. and they they flip them and like he'll buy a car for like five thousand dollars the bandana guy from la or is it he did another show no like he that. no this guy's in uh <clears throat> is in texas oh, he's okay. actually really cool you know his mechanics really cool too okay um but yeah he'll buy a car for like you know five thousand mm-hmm. dollars fix it up and sell it for like 50 mm. you know like yeah. Wish you had that kind of skill. Well, I wish I had that kind of skill, and, and I'm at the with the Mustang. It's like, ah, yeah, I know. Yeah, no matter if uh, <laughs> I don't get, it's like it started, dude. It's I get the it. most frustrating thing in my life right now. Uh, uh, well, that's good. That's actually it's a it's a real first world problem. Yeah, really first world problems. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna make me almost me living in that thing. I swear to God, it's not like you've never lived in a vehicle before, but it was like twenty years ago, <laughs> or today. You know, or today, whatever. <laughs> whatever. No, don't have to worry about that for today. Anyway, so time travel shows, uh, they suck. <laughs> they really, really do. I agree that you and I. Oh, didn't you know what? This is something kind of. It was odd how interesting it was, despite how ridiculous it was. Uh, somebody years ago, somebody came out with a Back to the Future video game. That's, oh, that's what we're watching, Back to the yeah, Future. Yeah, that's what it was. And oh, yeah. it's it's a kind of a weird game. Like, I, I I downloaded the demo of it, like, I don't know, three or four years ago, and it kind of irritated me. Like, it was no, that wasn't that much fun. The uh, extra content in it was fun, but the gameplay wasn't. Like, I didn't care. It was kind of a hunt and find game. It was, it was annoying. But somebody, uh, I'll post who it was later, spent took the time to take that game, the PS4 version, and actually take all the cutscenes, like a lot of people do, but he actually turned it into Back to the Future 4 and 5. And at first, you kind of—I kind of—I knew a little bit of the first part of the story because I played the demo game and had watched some cutscenes earlier on that went a little further. But then it got into stuff I hadn't seen before, and we got—we became engrossed in it. We were watching it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but it, it, was, was, it took like six hours of our lives. It was not. It was more like two and a half, three hours. Mm, but still, it was, it was an it afternoon. Was at least four. It was an afternoon, and it, but and it wasn't particularly exciting. Like the movies, the Back to the Future no. movies are exciting. But it was intriguing. Well, it was Sunday morning, and we uh, had nothing better to do. So yeah, I know. It just kept going and going and going and going and going. And he kind of said, how long is this? And every once in a while, I'd pause it to go to the bathroom, and he'd see the ticker mark on the bottom. Like, this is what? An hour and a two, whatever <laughs> left? And I was like, yes, yes. But it was interesting. It was I could see them making that movie. And yeah. that, I would like to see. The plots were good. Yeah, that's my point. Uh, I would like to see before Lloyd and Fox die, obviously. I'd like to see them get together and do a CGI Back to the Future 4. I think that would be in kind of not really Pixar style necessarily, but when when The Hobbit came out, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, of course, books and the movies and the cartoon movies. And in like, I want to say, well, before my second divorce, uh, back about the time my daughter was born, uh, even a little bit before that, they had a PS2 game, The Hobbit PS2 game. Mm-hmm. And I always thought, well, this is, it was one of my favorite games, one of the few games I played from beginning to end. And... I, I loved it so much, and I thought they should make a movie out of that. Because Lord of the Rings were already out at that point. I already had them on DVD. I said, if they go back and make a Hobbit, they should make it CGI. They should make it an adventure CGI cartoon, and then they turn around and make it the live action, which I still love, but I think they shouldn't have done that. 
Um, I think that's what they should do with Back to the Future 4. They should get Lloyd and, and Fox together. They can still get Leah Thompson. They can still get Biff. Forgive me for forgetting his name. Um, and do a real fun adventure CGI in the style, uh, not in the, necessarily the animation style, but in kind of the vein of what's that one that's out the paper folding origami one now where it's actually an adventure story. It's not like a cartoony thing, like a Pixar thing or maybe like, like a Incredibles or something that's more adventure okay. oriented. Um, and they could make a really cool movie out of it. I think it'd be a lot of fun and they could tell that story. Even they could tell the story of going back and seeing doc Brown when he was even younger back in the thirties. Um, I think the story itself was compelling enough and the villain was pretty impressive. She's crazy. Yeah. She's bat shit. Crazy. Yeah. And she hopped around in time just like they did. And, and then you, you ended up meeting Buford Tannen's dad from the old West. And then you, he, oh, it's just nuts. It's, it's, it was, it was really, I, I actually, it was engrossing. I actually recommend trying to find, you should put a link on this. I will. Uh, on our thing. I will try to find those videos. Cause they were like, what? You kind of think, the hell? Because think. it was, it made you think, it, yeah. it made me think a lot more like how, every time they go back in time, it's not. His 1985 mm -hmm. will never exist the day he left, ever. I know. You're right. Ever. You're right. And, and, he even changed and, it in the first movie. And every time every time they do something, uh -huh. like, and they kind of address this during the thing. Uh -huh. And I was thinking about it before they addressed it. It's like, you know, Doc Lloyd's like, well, what was, what was the villain like when you met her? Yeah. And you and I talked about this right after watching this. Yeah. And, like, she was just an old cat lady living in her window. Yeah. But then when he goes back in time, that's not how she's going to end up. Now she's she not arch villain. Yeah. She's not going to be the cat lady he met when he first met her. Which negates him meeting her. That's It's the yeah. time paradox. It's right. The, it's time paradox. Yeah. But to me, it was more like, how selfish are you every time you go back in time and change one? It's the butterfly effect, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Well, that's what I loved about. There was a part in there where actually Doc Brown becomes the villain. Kind of. Yeah. And because he becomes selfish, wants his, his timeline back. Not the, mm. not any of the timelines you guys know of, unless you've played the game. Um, he becomes his own selfish timeline, yeah. and he becomes the instigator of the villain. The antagonizer. The antagonizer, yeah. And he even uh, hides and he, he knocks uh, he, his young self out and buries him in a, in a hyperbaric chamber in yeah, water. Yeah, he kidnaps himself. And, it's just you know, crazy. Like, it's insane. Um, and that part I found really intriguing. I thought that would be fun. Now, I, I didn't look. I should have. It's so stupid. But it sounded like it was, it was Fox and Lloyd who did the voices for the game. I don't think so. I'll have to look. I, I really Because if it. it wasn't, they did a really good job. Yeah, I really doubt it was. I don't know. Uh, I've seen, I mean, I could see him. Doing I've seen it. Lloyd come back and do that that crazy fake commercial for the hoverboard, and I've seen Fox come back and do that fake trailer for Back to the Future Four. Um, yeah. They kind of, you know, Fox is kind of making a weird comeback again. I'm wondering if he's got some new medications that are kind of helping him because I've seen him in a few places lately. Well, he'll pop up every once in a while for like a five minute spot or a ten minute yeah. spot, something he can easily do. His best do. stuff was his guest star on Scrubs. When he played the OCD guy, mm. that was perfect. That was such a perfect role for his yeah. condition and for him. Yeah, yeah, he'll pop up every once in a while yeah. doing like a five or ten minute cameo or or whatever. And uh, I think he'll always do that, just as long as he can. Yeah, just for some fun, you know. He made whatever. the funniest joke in one of his interviews not not that long ago when he talked about something about his wife and, and how's your sex life kind of thing. <laughs> He's like, I just get to relax and I just, I just keep moving. <laughs> I, just, I was like, oh my god, dude. That's hilarious. Which is actually pretty dirty for him. <laughs> it is. Well, because he's he's fifty something now. He's like, fuck it. I've got yeah, Parkinson's. But, but even though he's always been like, he's kind of been the poster child. Although he does say, "Holy shit, Doc, you just integrated Einstein." That was like the, one of the first swear words we had in a movie that we owned. Well, yeah, the Transformers. Oh shit, what are we gonna do now? Right. But I mean, other than like, his, he's always been clean cut. Like, yeah, no way. You know, like, he's never done any movies where. What, like, The Secret of My Success might be the worst one? No, 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 no. He did the one with James Spader. Which um, one was that? Dog? Ow. Oh, my oh. God. Well, that was kind of like his darkest one. Um, it wasn't Secretary, was it? What was it? You're on my cord, sweetie. Basically, they were nightclub hopping. James Spader was like James Spader. Wow, I'd like to see tour. that. Yeah, it's it's way back there. I thought you... I can't... Dog? Hang on. <laughs> This is on one of my cords. <laughs> Stupid dog. All right, let's try this again. Um, no, are you sure? I don't think that was Fox. I think that was, that was Robert James, Downey. Nope, James Spader. Because Spader and Downey did one like that. And wasn't it... Um, 
What the fuck was it called? You're, you're thinking le- Lesson Zero. Lesson Zero, that's the one. That's, that's not it. This is a... Who's, in, who's a, the girl in that? Is it the me or who is it? Um, or is it Jamie? Jamie. Jamie Gertz. Yeah. Okay. Which we watched Lost Boys the other day. Did you? Uh, uh, yeah, I saw that. I just... Um, every Halloween I watch that movie. What the hell? Michael J. Fox. He's looking at... What are you looking at? Michael J. Fox and James Spader. Oh, looking at the name of the movie. Okay. I can pull up the trailer. Yeah. Let's, let's do, do that. that. Okay, let's see here. We're pausing now. We'll all edit part of this out. You know, we'll just see how this goes. Right, he was in Casualties of War. He did, That was the war one that he did. Light down it. or up? Light it and go down. Down. So there was Light of Day. Remember Light of Day? <laughs> no, I never saw that. Light. Family Ties Vacation. <laughs> what? Oh, Teen Wolf. I gotta eat Teen Wolf. I don't have that one yet. Poison. Wait a minute. Poison Ivy. I don't know. I don't... It's not that Poison Ivy. No, it's not. <laughs> not the good one. Go up. Night Court? Yeah. I've been watching a lot of Night Court lately, too. Does it hold up? Oh, fuck yeah. Well, dude. Dan Fielding yeah. always holds up. I've been watching a lot of Night Court, Mama's Family. Oh, God. I can't handle and that one. MASH. Dude, MASH rocks, dude. dude. MASH will always so, rock. So I found this channel. I don't know what I don't know what channel it is, but basically from 6 o'clock, it's... Night Court, seven o'clock hour. It's Mama's Family, mm. which is funny as hell now, dude. Um, I haven't seen it in years. I guess um, High School USA. What boat? Keep, uh, go up. Go up. Yeah. Go okay. Because now we're getting into like, uh, mm-hmm. what's the weird movie, the teen movie he was in when he was a kid? Um, something about a, a scavenger hunt. Right. I think that was that High School USA. Might have been. I don't know. Yeah, I forgot what way keep going. Before. The Hard Way with, with um, Woods. Doc wasn't Hollywood, it? the only movie that I know you ever had to keep going. Doc Hollywood. You know the you know the the, the story the Cars the movie the Pixar movie is basically just Doc Hollywood, right? <laughs> Greedy. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Life with Mikey. Life with Mikey, where he's the agent. Oh right! Yeah. Damn, some of these just went away. You're like cold blooded. Yeah, I don't know the, what the one... Frighteners. Dude, the Frighteners is, that's, is one of my awesome. one of my Halloween Halloween staples, dude. I love that movie. The effects are awesome. The acting is great. It's got one of my favorite bad guys, Jeffrey Combs. He's yeah, just amazing. Go, go down. Um, and of course, all the ghosts are wonderful. Where is my face? Where is um? I don't know. see now. This is why MDB drives me crazy. I just <clears throat> they don't even have. They don't even have Secret of My Success on here. That can't be right. That was like 85, wasn't it? No. It had to be later than that. Later than that? Bright Lights, Big City. Was that it? Yep, that's it. Well, this was... Oh, 88. Okay. Oh. James Briggs. Uh, writers, blah, blah, blah. J. Fox, Kiefer Sutherland, Phoebe Cates? Yeah. Holy fucking cow. This was one of those... It wasn't... Is um popular like I don't know if it's yeah it was well it wasn't Spader then you were thinking of Keith or Sutherland um, probably unless Spader just has a bit part in it I don't see him yeah Kelly Lynch but uh hey right there um t- top three are Fox Kiefer and Phoebe Cates I've still got Phoebe Cates tits like indelibly branded into my so, so does everybody our age from like born from 60 or 65 to 82 scroll down Diane Weist oh yeah William Hickey William Hickey Sam man Lords, Kelly Lynch Kelly Lynch if you don't know Let's see hey, David Hyde Pierce what the fuck yeah. Have you seen him lately on that? Oh, man, he's bald uh, as a cue ball. Um, did that, what, James Burroughs thing where he retired and they had the Friends cast and the Will and Grace cast and the Frasier yeah. cast. <clears throat> yeah, I think we need to see the... We need to see the trailer. Here, hang on. I could have sworn James Spader. Do have a link to the trailer in here? Uh, I guess not. Fucking irritating. This is this is another reason why. Man, oh, holy this thing holy crap! Bright lights, big city. Yeah, I don't think this wasn't like a very popular movie. Like, 
Well, it's really the combination of Family Ties and Back to the Future that made him famous. Uh, he did a couple things before that, but... America owes its veterans. Shut up. <laughs> We're veterans. I haven't seen a check yet. Wait a minute. <laughs> Remember when we were that age? Oh, Jessica Tandy. You've slept with girls that you haven't been in love with? Is it different when you're in love? Sure. It's better. I'm like, you know what that is. for a sec okay high school usa no that is a different movie uh the one i'm thinking of is called something else right where uh, they run around and like yeah they, but it's they, not they called have, like, that a blue van and one yeah it, it's got team. it's got a bunch of the, a couple of the guys from animal house and whatnot in it yeah. all right we're pausing all right shall we just cut off the hang on here let me check out the video real quick bring that up and pause that too while we're at it so i want to ask your i want to see if your wife's ever seen that so you want to see if she, you're gonna go up and ask her yeah she's going to bed why I wanted to get her before she went to bed because uh, I still heard her. Okay, all right, off. <laughs> Here we go. Pause. All right. <laughs> 